Welcome everyone, today we are going to parse different data from different web pages and web applications using Node.js. So let's start. Basically this use case is a real use case that I had in my work for one of my startups. Basically my task was to get all the cat breeds from somewhere, but unfortunately I didn't find any kind of public database to get those things for me. And I decided to write some kind of parser to get this data from any of uh, public sites, web pages, applications, etc. And my basic requirement was that the page should contain the breed name and the photo. Then I found the Wikipedia page about those breeds. Uh, they are in Ukrainian, but no worries. We will translate it to English as well. And basically, what about the results? We are able to get all the photos for sure and we parsed the names okay so we got the web page and the necessary data is in here right so first of all we should decide whether we are actually able to parse this page or not and how we can do that basically the web page should support server-side rendering. What does it mean and what the difference between the server-side rendering and client-side rendering? You can see in any of the forums or just Google it. But in simple words, client-side rendering is when the server returns to the client some kind of HTML cascade and then this client uh, lazy loaded all the data and push this data into this HTML cascade for sure. Compared to this, server-side rendering pushes all the data in the first request. We need this for the better SEO optimizations and other different things. So probably if you get this page from the top search results, most likely this page supports server-side rendering, so no worries. But actually how we can check this? Go to the network tab, reload the page, See the first request, you see that this actually is our request from to, to the server. And we can see that actually we have all the data necessary for us here. So the names are equal. And this means that we can get it and uh, parse it in some way. So why am I using the Node.js if I'm .NET software engineer mainly? Uh, the answer is simple, the Node.js is lightweight. It is easy to create a basic application to do some simple things like parsing one single one web page. On top of that, I found a library in Node.js that can use query select row and query selector to parse the HTML that we have downloaded. And this simplifies things a lot because uh, actually the parsing process seems like that. We just see the data that we need to get, we try to navigate it. So in that case, we see that we are dealing with a basic table structure. So we have a lot of tiers, tags, and uh, as you can see, they correspond to the separate row. And as I did, we can see that we can get our data from the first TD tag and first A tag. And uh, how we can get it by the code, we have just a perfect playground for the for, for this kind of tasks. There are Google tools for developers. And we can try our query selector all. Uh, as you remember, the element that we need to get is our table with class wiki table sortable. Like that. And then we should go to error and we can see that it returns us all the rows and now for example how we can get this name we know that that our name inside the TD and a tag so we do another query selector maybe it's not as fast as uh, the fastest thing in the world for sure but our purpose is to parse it only once and that's what we actually need. Okay, we got this A element and then inner text is our name. 
And to check this for other rows, we can get for second row, for third row, for fourth row, etc. etc. And then we can just copy paste those query selectors and use it in our Node.js application. Okay, so let's start our coding. So first of all, what libraries do we need actually? The Axios is the library that we need for sending the HTTP requests. The parse library is for parsing our HTML that we have downloaded from the Wikipedia. The fs.promises is file system library built in the, in the node for sure. And our additional translate library, which is not needed for us. But in, in my case, later on, I will push this data into my database. And I needed three languages like Ukrainian, Russian, and English. But it's not necessary in our case for the parsing. And first of all, uh, let's define necessary constants because these query selectors, URLs, and other stuff, they are not strict, they are not reliable, and they may change. And in order to be able to change this in one place, we keep all of them into constants. Regarding the Wikipedia agent, basically, um, when I was developing this application, I tried a lot of tries, and after some period of time, Wikipedia starts sending me uh, some kind of errors that I'm not able to query this page anymore. And I googled the reasons, found the solutions that we should just include the header with user agent, and then it started working again. So you may omit it as well. It will work for first few tries, but then probably you will need this. And then regarding the query selectors, you have already seen how we can query the breed name. So basically we get this. We got all of the tiers and then We can get the, our element in your text. Besides the breed name, we also need to get the photo URL and let's find out how we can get it. So if we navigate into the image tag that we have, we can see that Actually, photo is inside the image tag with class name image lazy loaded and lazy loaded. It's some kind of suspicious name because probably it means that this image isn't loaded by the first request and it is lazy loaded later on when user is browsing the page. So how we can check this, whether we can use this tag or not, it's pretty much easy. You can use any tool that, we, that you like to use. For example, C URL, Postman, whatever, and just send a query to, the, to this page. Get the HTML, save this HTML in some file. And just try to find our record here. Okay, here is our record. This is our wiki table sortable table and our first TR right here. And we can see that there is no image tag with class name image lazy loaded. But instead of this, we have a tag with class name image. And inside it, we have tag no script. And inside our no script, we actually have our image with no class name at all. And basically, we are going to get this image by following this a tag and then traversing the first child twice. And then we can get this source, which is actually our photo that we need. We can try it, just copy paste it. And yes, this is what we need actually. On top of that, we need the constants for our parsed information file and photos. Then I define our main method. I made it async and just call it. It allows me to use uh, asynchronous methods inside it and call asynchronous function later on. 
And let's create our helper functions. And the first function that we need to implement is called exists. It tests whether some file or folder exists by the provided path. We are using our file system access method for this purpose. The next method that we are going to use is download method. Inside it, we're using Axios library with the get method. And in response type, we should set array buffer because actually we are going to download the binary because the photo is a binary type of content. It's not like JSON or something like that. For the user agent, we set our previously set Wikipedia agent and validate status, we returns always true in order to make Axios library not throwing the phantom exceptions in case something is wrong. And then we validate the status code by ourselves. And the last function that we need to implement is new line. I decoupled it to the separate function because new line is actually platform dependent and new line for the Linux and for the Windows are different new lines strings. So I decoupled it to the separate message for the future purpose. And now we can implement our main function here. First of all, we check whether the photos folder exists or not. If it doesn't exist, we create it. Then we get uh, our HTML content in response variable. We parse it by our library parse. We get all of the rows by our query selector. And then we should emit first and last row. And let me show you why do we need to do that. Actually, you can see that First, tr doesn't contain our relevant data. It's only column names. And if we scroll down to the last tr, it doesn't contain rel relevant data as well. As you can see, it also contains the column naming. So we should omit the first and last column to not parse them. Then we process our rows one by one with async lambda inside it. We get our column with the breed name, we parse breed name from it, from it, and we get photo column, create photos folder, and uh, as you can see, the photos will be unique, because we use unique breed name, and in our case, each breed name is unique. We check whether photo file pass exists, if it does exist, this means that the breed name with that name has already been parsed, maybe this application was called twice, and we don't need to do redundant requests to a Wikipedia page and do anything else. We just skip this element and continue doing other roles. And then we check if our photo column is not now, it's not undefined. And the same for our first child of photo column. We got no script node from it. As you can see, Yes, we get our a tag with image class. Then we get no script. Then inside no script, we get the image tag. And from our image tag, we parse source attribute and we concatenate the source attribute to our HTTPS. Because as you can see, our source attribute doesn't contain this HTTPS. And if we add it, then we can get the image. Then we call the download for the photo and save this data into the file inside our folder. The last thing left is to do translation for the breed name and uh, save this parsed breed name into our parsed file. And one thing that you can note that our write file for the photo isn't awaited. We actually don't need to await this because our saving the necessary data to the parsed document doesn't depend on the saving the photo. The photo could be saved parallelly. So we actually send the request, got the data synchronously and save it parallelly. We even can save those photos parallelly uh, and not sequentially because the photo names are different. They don't depend on each other. And probably that's it. And just try to run it again in order to make sure that it, it works. There is no logs for successful pass. But as you can see, we again parsed all necessary data.
and all necessary photos. Actually, we can find them here. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for your attention, guys. Um, please share this video with your colleagues, friends, etc. It will help my channel to grow. Subscribe to my social media below in the description and also find the article that I wrote regarding the same theme if you don't like to watch the long videos. Goodbye.